Today we're going to be talking about um, the CAMP factor and susceptibility testing. So um, in our lab we have uh, three Haemophilus uh, species that we uh, do testing for. And um, those are Haemophilus influenzae, Haemophilus parainfluenzae, and parahemolyticus. And what we did was we did a test to see what organisms grow and need the um, X factor, V factor, or both. And um, X factor is hemin, uh, V factor is NAD, and obviously if they need both, then it's both of them together. This organism uh, was Haemophilus influenzae, and it is one of the three clinically significant organisms that do need both. Um, and as you can see, uh, there, there is a little bit of light growth all over the plate. See the little dots um, on the sheen? This is a blood auger plate. Um, so in order for the organism to grow, we do need to have those nutritional discs on there. They're not susceptibility, they're nutritional discs. Um, then uh, this one was the para-influenzae, and it should need just the V, but we didn't really have a good growth around the V there. Then there is parahemolyticus, and honestly, parahemolytic, yeah, parahemolyticus could <laughs> grow on blood auger um, without needing these discs because it has a hemolysin in it, um, hence the parahemolyticus, you'll find that it does uh, have a zone of hemolysis underneath of it, um, and it is one of the hemophilus that can actually grow on the blood auger plate on its own and not just the chocolate. Um, but uh, it should only require the V-disc. But again, since it can grow on the blood auger plate on its own, it doesn't actually need these discs, and that's why it's growing everywhere. Um, this is also what uh, your plate will look like if you accidentally dig into it. Um, it'll cause a big old rip down the middle or wherever it is that you dug, and you'll get a result like this. This is um, a susceptibility test. This is for um, Streptococcus pneumoniae. And notice that beautiful alpha hemolysis there. And we have the P disc on there. Um, and that's the optogen disc. And it is sensitive to optogen. So here's a nice, beautiful picture of um, Streptococcus pneumoniae. Notice all that beautiful greening, and it looks kind of wet in a way. Um, you also can't really see the, the colonies all too well, which is very, um, very common with strep. It can look like it's clear, uh, maybe not even having much color at all per se, just for the colony, and just ends up being the color of the hemolysis that ends up... Um, happening in the auger. This is Streptococcus pyogenes, and it does have beta hemolysis around it. Notice it's a white-ish looking organism, and right there is the bacitracin disc, which it is susceptible to, and so there is a zone of no growth around there. Just because there is a zone of no growth in a in a specimen that has a susceptibility desk on it doesn't mean that it's actually susceptible to it. You have to follow the manufacturer's guidelines and measure the area of no growth to see if it fits with their guidelines. I'm just trying to give you a really nice picture of strep pyogenes. They, it did not react completely the way that we expected it to in regard to the hemolysis. Uh, these plates that I bought are not reacting as expected, and I'm not very happy with them, but usually you would see a really nice clear zone around the colonies that would show the beta hemolysis. This is the CAMP test, and we only did the positive and negative QC, and it's for the beta hemolytic strep. Notice the the negative has beta, that's strep pyogenes. The positive has 
um, what doesn't look like beta hemolysis on the line, that's where it was streaked, but that is strep A galactiae, which is group B, pyogenes is group A, um, strep A galactiae is group B, and down the middle line is strep, sorry, it's staph aureus, and what's happening is um, the reason that there is a zone of an arrowhead is that the hemolysin in the strep A galactiae is being amplified by the hemolysin that's in the Staphylococcus aureus. So if you look here, there's that beautiful arrowhead. See, there is growth on all three lines. And if there was a uh, specimen, a patient specimen that you were trying to figure out, you'd put it on the other side.